Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning from Hong Kong. Good morning from Hong Kong. Coming to you live from Hong Kong. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Angel. Hi, Anita and Marsha. Hi, Jiva, Angel. Hi, Linda and Anita. Good morning. Good morning, Caddy. Good morning. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Elaine. Hi, Karen. Good morning, One Tribe and JG. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Faye. Hi, Jillian. Hi. Hi, QC. Hi, Regina from Clearwater Bay. Hi, Budor. Hello, Mom. You said hello, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Diane. Hi. Hi, Diane. Good morning. Hi, Blurry. Hi, Keiko. Hello, Keiko. Hi, Mary. Hi, Monica in Singapore. Hi, Freddie. Hi, Rebecca. Anusha, Singapore. Good morning, Carrie. Good to see you. Good morning, Seoul, Korea. Liz, yeah. Hi, Soso in Bali. Hi, Soso. Hi, Danny. Hi, Lawrence Millman in Bali also. June, hi, June. Hi, Suzanne. Suzanne's in Melbourne. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi, Pansy in Shenzhen. And hi, Nav over there, just over there. Yeah. Hi, Maya. Hi, Maya. Hello. Hi, Soso. -so. Hi, Victor. There you are, Victor in Macau. Hi, Sabina. Hi, Sabina Chang. <clears throat> Good morning. There's Matt, Mr. Matt over in Singapore. There you are, buddy. Hi, Emma. Amy Mines to Dallas in New York City. Or no, you're in Atlanta. Hello. Hi, Amani. Hi, Janet. Hi, David. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. I'm thinking about those cookies, Nikki. Hi, Winston. Winston, there you are. Miss you, man. Good morning. Ali Bogard. Damn, New Mexico. We're too far. We need a satellite. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Gina. Gina. <clears throat> Hi, Melody. Hi, May. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, from Macau. There you are. Daryl, Hong Kong. Daryl, my bro. There you are. Hi, Summer. Hi, Yu Ching. Hi, Yu Ching in Shanghai. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn in Shanghai. Hi, guys. Hi, Betty. Hi, Betty. Miss Kim Possible. Hello, Kim Possible. Hi, Poen. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, Linda. Rachel Solomon's in Australia. We miss you. Come home. Come home. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning. Good morning, Lot. Good morning. Yes, good morning from Hong Kong. Hi, Nana. Hello, Nana. There's Marsha. We're waiting, Marsha. Roll call. You just made it, Marsha. <laughs> Hi, Vivian, over there in the U.S. I see you. Hi, Mana. Hi, Mana. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> Hello, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Yeah, good morning, Vivian. Good morning. Great to have you here. Such a great thing. This is like the highlight of the lockdown for me, this little roll call with you people, with all you people. <clears throat> You had, had to finish your meditation. Okay, okay, Marsha. Okay, We're, we, we, we accept that. Hello, Elise. Hello, Elise. Okay. <clears throat> so, good morning, Bertina, over there in Toronto. We miss you, too, over there in Toronto. Yeah. Okay, so um, I would like to begin talking about um, something meaningful which is kind of the, the, the purpose of our, our gathering here. Um, hi, when every 930, there you are. <clears throat> um, you know, part of when I'm, th I've been thinking about this talk each day, of course, what to talk about is part of my thinking. Um, and in that, what creeps up is like, I want to give something meaningful. Hi, Steffi. Hi, Christy. Is I want to give something meaningful. You know, it's like uh, there's the natural inclination that we have in all of us that is that we want our life to have meaning. And there's this, you know, yoga is our, our commonality, our common um, pathway 
to derive meaning from our own heart, our own body, from our own mind. We want to experience meaning. We want to have a meaningful life. And that is no small task. And it actually creates a lot of anxiety and it creates a lot of um, fear. And um, we, we are both uh, some days inspired about things we're gonna do that we feel have meaning. And then other days we're daunted by them and, and scared of them. And I think that you know we're all over time. It's like a it's like a never ending process to derive meaning from life. Is is a process, and there's no arrival. Like there's no arrival. Like why? Like I I question myself, um, or I question people that I'm inspired by. Like, why are the Rolling Stones still playing music? You know, they're like grandparents. You know, there were there was this great little video I saw yesterday or the day before of the um, Rolling Stones doing a, uh, a lockdown concert. The four of them got together and they did the little concert. You probably saw it. Each of them alone in their house. And, 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 and you, you, I look at someone like that and I go like, why are they still playing music? Like they made it, they made their money, they made their mark on culture, they, they, all their albums are out. Like, like, there you go, you're done. You had a meaningful life. You'll never be forgotten. Or except everyone will be, probably. <clears throat> but the thing is that, that it's, a, it's a process, it's not a destination. There's no arrival with meaning. So, so even when we do something meaningful, there's this experience that we have, we're like, wow, that was great. I spent this time wisely. And then the next day comes, you're like, what am I gonna do today? It's like, <clears throat> there is a unending process going on inside us that is seeking deeper meaning. And if we don't answer to that, anxiety comes up or depression comes up or regret, remorse, all these things come up. So <clears throat> the idea today is thoughtful time. The idea today is thoughtful time. Which we could say is like time spent either considering what would be meaningful to do or doing what we've already concluded would be meaningful to do. Because we can't assume to know what is meaningful all the time. We don't know. <clears throat> it's about thought, uh, thoughtfulness and being engaged with our own mind and heart. Thoughtful time is a way that we can, I guess I'd say like fight back against the anxiety or the regret of feeling like our time's being wasted or that we are not doing something of meaning. And the interesting thing is that even when you're doing something that is important, it doesn't always feel like it's meaningful. Like at work or in life, there's a lot of times where we're doing things that are important to do, gotta do them, they have to get done, but they don't feel like they're in the context of deeper meaning for ourselves. So thoughtful time is, is, a, is, is this idea that we, we consider for ourselves how we will spend our time. And then de once we determine a good way to spend it, then we, then we actually do the meet, then we live the meaningful time. Time itself is a really important concept to, to consider. It's interesting, I find um, uh, it is really easy to underestimate how much time important things take. It's really easy to underestimate how important things, how much time important things take. So I just rest on that. It is. It, it is such a, I, it seems to me for myself and for the world around me, it's a very common mistake 
to underestimate how much time important things take. Hi, Sheila O'Sullivan. <clears throat> and hi, Kristen. <clears throat> and when you consider, like, there's that amazing TV show, I think the best TV show ever produced, uh, True Detective, the first season. And, and Michael, or uh, Matthew McConaughey, he has his great, he has so many great lines in that show. But one of the lines is that he says, just like this, this is moment. And uh, Woody Harrelson, the other character, is like, wah, 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 talking about all this stuff. And Matthew McConaughey sits back and he goes, well, it takes a whole lifetime to get good at one thing. And I, I, and I remember hearing it and I'm like, damn. It's like, I want to do everything. I want to be everything. And, and it's possible to be anything. I mean, it's kind of a, that's a sort of a mercurial statement, but it's possible to, to be anything, but you can't be everything. So this, uh, this applies to our time or use of time that like, it's like how we spend our time becomes more sacred over time because, you know, more or less, you start to realize how little time we have. How little time we have. Hi, Cal Perry and the news bit. <clears throat> the anxiety that comes up from feeling like we don't have enough time or, or I'm not, you know, I'm not doing something meaningful tends to drive us. Anxiety drives us to do more and more things, to do tons of things and to fill our time. And in my previous talks, I've been one of the things that I've, propose that we implement that has been hella, hella helpful for me, deeply helpful, is, is to schedule time. To schedule time, to set, set an alarm and to schedule what I do when I wake up. And putting, slotting in really meaningful things. Things that help to clear my system, to clear my mind, suffix mind, to clear my body, pranayama, meditation, yoga, etc., etc., to put things into my mind that are valuable. Reading important, you know, wise, powerful readings so that my mind is in a place where it's like, it's, a, it, it's contemplating the right things. And the, you know, the, one of the, one of the huge, hi, Rosemary. Yeah, 10 years. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I, I agree. One of, the, um, one of the things that, that I find is so helpful is to push back against the anxiety monsters that come up, that make us try to read and do everything right now. I wanna get it done, schedule it in, I, I succumb to that. And so how do, I, you know, how do you fight back against that? Because anxiety robs, steals us of meaning, steals it us of, of meaning. We don't experience what we're doing, we just do a bunch of stuff. So in order to push back against this, this, the, the monsters of anxiety, it is really valuable to schedule things and to observe our schedule, to recognize how much time it takes to do important things. This is Mount Kailash right here. Wow. And Mount Kailash is in Tibet and the average elevation or altitude of Tibet is between, you know, like four and 5,000 meters the whole country, it's like the whole country is on the top of the, the, it's the roof of the world. And a lot of the country is dead flat. It's like a high desert, alpine desert. And there's sacred places to visit in Tibet. So it's a really, it's a really in, 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 enchanting and endearing and inspiring place to go. And it's so high and so um, rugged it's arid, very little lives up there, that, it, that it's challenging and difficult, so not a lot of people go. I mean, now more and more, but not a lot, it's a, it's a very, um, in ways that the whole the country is very desolate. 
So there's something of value. It's like, wow, it's, 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 it's fascinating in the temples and the culture. And Mount Kailash stands as, a, as the axis of the universe for the Buddhists, Hindus, the Jains, and for people like me and maybe, maybe people like you. Like it stands as this thing that, that, that identifies some kind of structure, the stability within the chaos. And so years ago, I decided I wanted to go. And so I went there with my good friend, Stephen. And we, the, the trip that we took, you have to have a guide. It's, it's a restricted area. And, and we took a guide. And the guide's trip was 27 days. I mean, it's a long trip, man. I remember looking at it going like, damn, like everything in life has to go on hold. So it's like, it wasn't an easy decision. It was like a super long time. Like the, 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 the mountain itself is not climbed, you walk around it. You know, it takes four days. You can do it faster, but like in general, it takes four days. And that slow walk puts you into a process. It slows your mind down. This slow pilgrimage, this walk around the mountain, it, it, it slows time. Nothing's really happening. It's just you and your mind in this epic scenery. And to get there, I mean, to get into that space, our guide schedules, like a whole week going from Kathmandu to Mount Kailash. Whole week. I mean, the distance, I mean, we know we get our plane, you can be anywhere super fast, bang. But it takes a whole week to get there. It's like, wow, dude. It's a long time. It's like, who's got that kind of time? Come on, man, let's get there. Let's drive there in two days. Anyway, it seems so meaningful, so we, we did it. And <clears throat> we got in our Toyota Land Cruisers, the preferred choice of truck for the high altitude. They're amazing. And we drove from Kathmandu. Kathmandu is 1,400 meters, 1,400 meters. It's not that high, higher in Hong Kong, but 1,400 meters. And we drove to Mount Kailash. Now, the base of Mount Kailash is, I think it's 4,400 meters. Like the town Darchin is this, this small little village at the base of Mount Kailash, where you stay the night before you do the, the walk around. It's 4,400 meters. So that's 3,000 meters. So we took a week to get there, but going up 3,000 meters, man, your head spins. Woo! And there was days when some of our group were like loopy. We'd stay an extra nights just to acclimatize. And you drive, and you drive, and it's super uncomfortable. There's like the back then the roads were non-existent. So you're driving through riverbeds and up and over these crazy tundras. I mean, it was epic. I remember many times looking out the window going like, this is a movie. Like this like dust everywhere, you know, nomadic tribes inside of the tundra you know, at the river, washing their babies. We're driving through the river and it's like, oh, it's like, oh my God. And the altitude back then, the iPods, couldn't listen to music, the iPods would cut out. You're just sitting there, oh, in a truck for days and days and days. Then you get there and you're like, whoa. But we, when we got there, there was already this experience of like, holy, wow, like this is intense. You're so deep inside yourself. You're already sacrificed your time, your money, your comfort, everything. Like, ah, oh. it's like, what else do you have just to be in yourself? And then we begin to walk and, 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 and on, uh, we walk for the first day and we sleep out in the um, Valley of the Gods where these, it's a huge canyon where the rock walls, the, it's like, it's like the Grand Canyon or whatever, the massive walls and the, the, the shape of the rocks look like the faces of the gods in Buddhism. It's the valley of the gods. You're like, and it's like you're being blessed. It's like you're, you're being blessed as you lie there and sleep there the night and you wake up this massive riverbed that you're on walking for days. Well, it's hours, but it seems like days. The second night you get around the corner and you camp on the, this, the side of the river facing the north side of Mount Kailash. It's epic. That's the picture. That's the north face of Mount Kailash. That's the face. So camping, just like looking at that. 
and <clears throat> we're camping there and we're already, we're one day in, one sleep in on the second day camping, winds blowing and a group arrives and there's like 12 of them and they camp right beside us. They camp right beside us and they put up their tents and it's like a little cluster of our tents, a little cluster of their tents. Anyway, we didn't talk to them. I mean, they got there late and we were eating and then went to bed. I mean, you're kind of, you're not conversive. You're not like, Hey, it's not social. You're like, it, there's a deepness to it. Super deep. At about three in the morning, I woke up to blood curdling scream. Ah, ah, screaming. Steven and I wake up like, what the hell is that? Holy crap. One of the, one of the, the smaller groups within our little team was three girls from Germany and one of them was a doctor and uh, <clears throat> this uh, the the one of the Sherpas or the guides from the other camp came to our camp and said is anyone 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 here doctor nurse is anyone, can, we need help so this girl from our camp she got up walked over and we were kind of it was dark we didn't hear couldn't figure out what was going on a couple minutes later she comes back our camp's all awake now. It's like three in the morning. She's like, one of the one of the um, one of the trekkers from the other group is dead. We're like, oh my god. Our group gathers, their group gathers, and then we we hear the story. So we're all like, Phew. someone like right like the tent next door. This girl's dead, and she was from I think she was from Germany also or somewhere in Europe. And the story goes that they, instead of doing this 27 day trip like we were on, they did a short trip. It was like eight days. They flew to Nepal and they flew from Kathmandu where we were in trucks and they flew to Pokhara and they flew to Jamsam, which is in t uh, Nepal on the other side of the Himalayas from Mount Kailash. And they took High, high altitude Sikorsky helicopters. And you fly from Nepal, which is down low, up and over the mountains to the plateau of Tibet. And it's like, boom, boom, a flight from Germany to Kathmandu, a flight to Jamsam, helicopter over, boom, and boom. You are literally two days after leaving your gorgeous apartment in Tibet at the foot of Mount Kailash. And this was because they shortened the trip. They just, it's like, don't have the time. I don't have the time. So it's like, I get it. I mean, I've done that in many ways too. You do this like condensed trip and they're gonna do the Quora and then fly out and get home, get to work. So you can't take time off or whatever. Time is money or whatever. But the body couldn't acclimatize. We were sick for days leading up to the Quora. We finally get there. The highest point of Mount Kailash's Quora is 5,000, I wrote it down, what is it? 5,630 meters, 5,600 meters. That's the highest point that you walk up and over. And so this is high, it's really high. So the body's not used to it, so it needs to get ready. It needs to get good at being at altitude. It takes a lifetime to get good at anything. That they had to pick her up, wrap her up, and the whole team went back the other way. They left, everyone left, they didn't do the Quora. And we chanted, Om Triambakam Yajambahi Sugandam Pushti Sardinam Purva Rakam Evabandanan Mrityo Muksha Mamritat. And, 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 and in that mantra is this idea of becoming comfortable or friendly with death. It's like becoming friends with death. And so it's like, what's the, what's the meaning of all this? Why, what is this story? Where's the value? Well, for me, it reminded me of how important thoughtful time is, meaning consider how meaningful something is. And if something is really meaningful, give it the appropriate time. Things that matter take more time. To go into the deep, it takes time. You can get things done. You can check things off. Check, 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 check. Hyper productivity is, is valuable too. 
at times, but that does not drop you into the deepness. The deepness. Yeah, it takes time. Not everything is going to take us 27 days. Not every holiday is 27 days. But like considering things like, okay, healing takes time. Healing. Relaxing takes time. Regenerating. Sleep takes time. Takes time. Michael Phelps is the famous swimmer from the Olympics, 18 medals, 18 gold medals or whatever, six silvers or something, like the best Olympian ever. And there's a lot of study then research done around his life and going like, how did he do so well, right? And a couple of things uh, were revealed. One is that he had goals since he was like six years old and he trained for them. Since he was six to go to the Olympics. And he scheduled every minute of his day. Now, I propose that this is an interesting exercise. I propose this is an interesting exercise. To schedule every minute of your day for one week or, you know, one month. How, how deep are you into it? Every minute of your day. To show how long things take and scheduling every minute of the day and then live your day and reflect on it in your journal later and go, did those minutes add up? Like if it's doing a schedule forward, if you're doing a schedule forward, you can say, I'm going to do this and this and this and this. And then you look back and you go, okay, did that happen? And you have to readjust your mind to the relationship to time. Scheduling every minute of the day. What Michael Phelps talked about was that by scheduling every minute, he knew that he was doing enough training. He didn't feel anxious, like I should be doing more training. He knew because he scheduled every minute. He knew he was eating right. He knew he was sleeping right. He knew he was doing things like spending time with his girlfriend or whatever. He knew his mind could relax if he saw the schedule and said, that this is going to lead to the greatness of my goals or whatever. And it worked. They said, you know, what, um, what were the main things that you, what were the main values of that approach? And he, he listed a few. And, and one of them was that scheduling every minute, he was able to, where is it? <clears throat> Not worry and get hung up about bad performance. Bad performance. He wouldn't get hung up around bad performance because he knew that he was being thoughtful with his time. So his t the takeaway from him was that schedule your time deeply and do your best. And do your best. And you'll be able to sleep at night and, you won't, and we won't fear death as much. We won't be so anxious because we give things meaning. We give meaningful things the right time. And then we just do the best we can. And that, this is a good, that's a good approach, I think. So the, 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 the challenge is maybe we should schedule every minute of a day for like a week and just see what that's like. See, like, where, where are the gaps? Or where am I under scheduling or over scheduling, you know? Every minute. I don't mean like schedule, you know, a meeting. I mean every minute. What makes sense for me to do with the time that remains? What makes sense for me to do with the time that remains? The time that remains is the time of today or the time of our life. Like what the time, time is a construct that we are working within. What makes sense? for me to do with the time that remains. Thoughtful time. Meaningful things take time. I hope this is helpful. I hope it was interesting. And I'm really happy to be able to share this time with you. I'm happy you guys are here with me. Mount Kailash. Muhammad Ali. Boom, boom, boom. Greatest of all time doing things that bring meaning to us and 
often are things that leave the world and the people around us somehow better. So I send you guys my love and uh, send me comments, send me messages as you wish. I'm going to go do a level two practice now, level two practice. So please join me. Please join me. And uh, I look forward to hearing how you schedule every minute of your day for one week. I'm going to try it starting tonight. I'm going to start scheduling every minute starting tomorrow. I'd like to hear what you think, okay? See you in practice one minute or see you tomorrow. It's 9.30. Bye-bye.